Angie. Hey, we're gonna learn it from Angie. Ah, uh, she's a robot from Sweet. We're gonna learn it from Angie. That's me. Welcome to Engineering Expo. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm an engineer at FutureFoam. I'm also part of the Engineering Expo Committee. And today, with me, I have Sierra. Hi, everyone. I'm Sierra. I'm a student at Wichita State University studying engineering technology management. I am also Miss Southwest within the Miss Kansas and Miss America organizations. And I'm the founder of Let's Go Full Steam Ahead, a nonprofit focused on science, technology, engineering, arts, and math education and engagement to empower the next generation of innovators. That's you. That sounds really cool. Where can I go to find more information? Well, if you're online, you can visit letsgofullsteamahead.com to learn more about Let's Go Full Steam Ahead, learn more about STEAM education, and if you really like the activity today, you can find instructions for it and other activities that you can do at home or in your classroom. So be sure to tell your teacher. Speaking about the activities today, what are we doing? I'm really excited about today's activity. So something that I have always enjoyed doing is playing with Legos. So today we're gonna learn about Legos, we're gonna learn about computers, and we're going to learn how computers talk to each other and give instructions. Perfect, okay. Here's a list of materials that you'll need. So when we talk to each other, Rachel, we're using language. We use words and phrases and sentences to talk to each other. And they're all made up of letters. And computers, they kind of have the same thing going on, but it's not human language. It's something different. So we can't, as humans, necessarily talk to computers and give them instructions that uh, they know what to do. But there are some ways we do talk to computers. OK, Google. Tell me a joke. What did one wall say to the other? Meet you at the corner. We can physically talk to computers, but there's something else that goes on behind the scenes in the computer's version of a brain to help them understand what we're asking them to do. And so what that is, is actually called coding. We can give instructions to computers through a process called coding, which the translation process of human speak to computer speak was first kind of thought of by a person named Grace Hopper, and she is really cool. You should definitely check her out. So what we're going to do today, this activity, we're going to use some of my favorite things, Legos, to translate uh, human conversation into a code, and then we're going to translate a secret message and uncover what that secret message is. So are you excited? I'm excited. Super. I'm excited too. So let's get started. Well, this doesn't look like computer parts. That's true, these aren't computer parts, but we are using Lego, something that hopefully you have at home to build our own code and so that we can understand what's happening inside a computer's brain. So you're gonna need to get your supplies, computer paper. Here's a piece for you. Thank you. And here's a pen. Awesome. And also some scissors. Okay. So what you're going to do is you are going to write out the alphabet with enough space to leave a little bit inside the letters, and then we're gonna cut them out in strips like this. And if you want, you can add punctuation. I added period, exclamation period. point, question mark. Exclamation point. Okay. okay, perfect. Smiley face. Perfect. So okay. now you're going to take your little key uh, plate. You're going to take one of these and you're going to lay out your letters across and leave a little bit of space because we're going to start putting Legos and assign them to each letter. You might have to trim down your, I don't know. Hmm. Perfect. So now here's the fun part. We get to pick for every letter of the alphabet, we're going to pick a Lego to represent that letter. Okay. So 
start picking. <laughs> well, I think for the A, I'm probably going to pick one it has a lot because it's a vowel and there's probably a lot of vowels. So I'm going to choose this, um, this one with this light teal one. That's perfect. I'm going to pick this pink shiny one because I think that's a really good idea. And I like pink, so I'm going to make it the first letter of my alphabet. Okay. And then just go through the rest of the alphabet. If there are letters that show up often, like vowels, or letters like T or S are used a lot, try and pick ones that you have lots of pieces for. Like these, we have a lot of these pieces, and we don't have as many of these pieces. So letters that don't come up so often, like X, <laughs> maybe pick one that uh, you have less pieces in. OK. So we'll just get started? So we can just get started, exactly. So something also important is maybe you don't have a lot of different types of Legos, but what you can do is you can change the orientation of the Legos. So say you have a piece like this one, where it's two and it's red and it's kind of longer than it is tall. You can change it and change it up and down, and that can be a different letter. So maybe if it's this way, it means D, or maybe if it's this way, it means S. Okay, so now we've built our coding translation tool that we're going to use to uncover our secret messages. Now, when I was building mine, there weren't quite enough Legos for me to pick a different one for each kind, so I used the same Lego piece, um, but I changed the way it was sitting on the board. So I changed the orientation of the Lego piece to signify different letters. Did you do that too? I do, I have two doubles. I have these green pieces here, one's facing up and one's facing down. But I also have this singular green piece, and I don't think that I can I can switch pieces for that. So I'm going to take this one away, um, and then let's choose another one. It doesn't look like you're using this piece. All right, thank you. That works. Okay, Perfect. I'm all done. Okay, great. So now that we have our coding translation tools, um, something important about secret messages is that all of them have a different key, kind of like, locks and doors, they need a special key to open a locked door. We're doing the same thing with our code. You need a special translation tool to unlock the secret message. So Rachel has her secret translation tool and I have mine. And it's gonna be very important when you're translating the message at the end of this that you use the correct tool, which we'll give to you, don't worry. So Rachel, I'm gonna give you a challenge. Okay. It's kind of a challenge for me too, but I'm gonna have you write a secret message on this one using your code and I'm gonna leave the room so that you can make a secret message. And then when I come back in, I'm gonna to have to decode your message. Okay, I'll call you when I'm done. Okay, great. See you soon. All right, I'm finished. Come on back on. Okay, I'm so excited. Let me make some room here. Thank you. Scoot some of this out of the way. And then can, can we slide your key over so I can see it a little bit? Okay, perfect. All right, so I see that the first one is this shiny pink, which is, I like this one a lot, and it looks like it stands for I. And it looks like you left some space, so maybe this is a word? Yes. Okay, cool. So I'm looking for one that is blue with six dots. L. Okay, um, a sideways one, yellow with four, eight dots. So this one's yellow with four dots. Okay, here we go. O. And then a green slanty one. Here's a green slanty one, but it doesn't look like it's going the same direction. Okay, here we go, it means V. And then a little star, that's cute. E. And then it comes down here, so it looks like a new word. So we've got this gemstone piece. S. And then orange with two dots. W, yeah. And then 
this piece again. I know that this one means E. I love sweet. Is that the code? That is the code, but can I change it real fast? Sure. Oh, another one. Okay. Smiley face. I love sweet smiley face. Yay! <laughs> Yay! We did it. Okay. Well, see, this is really cool because you were able to create a code index and a code, and I was able to translate your secret message using this. So this is the same thing that happens with computers. Humans give instructions, and then the computers use their knowledge to translate what we just said and then perform that instruction. So we just did the exact same thing. You're basically a computer programmer now. No way, that's really cool. So we did a lot today. We really did. We learned about computers and how they talk to each other. We learned about how humans can talk to computers using something called code, which translates human talk into computer talk. And we even created our own code and created secret messages for each other to translate using our special coding tool. Well, would it be really difficult if we didn't have the key? That's a really good question. What do you all think? Go ahead and pull out your engineering notebooks and write down the answer to the question, would it be hard to translate a secret code without the key? So we used this key to write another secret message. Pull out your engineering notebook and figure out what this says. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a wonderful time with our event, Coding with Legos. If you solved the secret message, take a picture and upload it to our event page for a chance to win a prize. One of the prizes you could potentially win is my book, Innovators, Women in History Who Have Made Positive Contributions to STEAM. One of the women featured inside the book is Grace Hopper. We talked a little bit about her earlier. She's the one who really invented the idea of translating human talk into computer code, which is exactly what we did today. Until then, see, see you next time. time.